everybody, I'm TJ, this is Baby Star, and I wanted to make a video today to help other single mothers out there who may have a small baby and find themselves getting sick for the first time and being at home by themselves with a baby and really not knowing what to do because it's really, really challenging. I've actually just come out of COVID. I'm, I'm like 95% better. I have a tiny bit of a cough, so I might cough a bit during this video, but I'm basically better now. I thought I'd wear pajamas in the video because A, we've just woken up and B, one of the points I wanted to make was actually it's okay to spend all day in your pajamas when you're sick. It's actually okay. You don't need to put clothes on. Take the pressure off yourself. Like it's hard enough being sick, being a single mother, having a small baby to look after, especially if the baby's also sick. So cut yourself a break and stay in your pajamas. In honor of that, we are wearing pajamas in today's video. <laughs> I'm going to tell these lovely people some tips to help them if they're ever sick in that situation because we learned some stuff didn't we? We learned some stuff about how to cope. So my hope is that you get some ideas from this video about what to do when you're sick and your baby's sick and you're a single mother and I'm also really hoping that you guys watching will leave some suggestions in the comments of things that have helped you if you're a single mom and you've been sick and you had to look after a baby while you're sick. Please put your comments and suggestions in the comment box. My hope is that one day a woman who's got a baby, who's single, who's sick, who finds herself in this situation will do a search on Google and will find this video and will hear all of my tips and suggestions and will then read all of your tips and suggestions, the things that helped you when you were sick at home with a small baby to look after and no help. So the first tip I've already given you, it's okay to stay in your pajamas. <laughs> really, it is. My second tip is get somebody to, to buy food for you, especially if you're in a situation like COVID where you're isolated and you can't go anywhere to get anything for yourself. Just get somebody, anybody, a friend, a neighbor, someone who works for you, your, your cleaner, the stranger you met once at the library. Like it doesn't matter. Just, just swallow your pride and get somebody to go and do a shopping run for you. Get them to get groceries and food that you're going to need, toilet paper, things like that, but also some medications, anything that will help you with whatever the illness is that you have. Mm. I was in a lucky situation that a couple of weeks before I got COVID, I had just started trialing a girl who I've hired to help me out for a few hours, three times a week around the house. And she was supposed to come over on the day I, I first got really sick. And I said to her, look, don't come. I, I might be contagious. I'm pretty sure it's COVID. Maybe instead of coming, you could go and buy me all this stuff I need and that will be your work for the day. And I paid her for that instead of paying her to come and help me out around the home. So I was lucky. But if, if I'd gotten sick two weeks earlier and I didn't have that woman hired, I would have had to ask a friend to do that because you, you just have to. You just have to. Somebody has to bring you the stuff you need. I then, I asked her to buy me millions of vegetables and herbs and stuff. And I then somehow found the energy to cook a giant soup. This is my next tip. If you can find the energy to somehow stand up for a couple of hours, which was hard because I was drenched in sweat. I had a fever. I was exhausted. I was nearly fainting. But I made myself a massive pot of soup. And the great thing about that was, A, it was very healing. It was full of vegetables and herbs and all sorts of goodies. I can put the recipe down in the comments if you want. It's a really immune boosting soup. Um, but it also meant I just had something to eat anytime. You know, I wasn't that hungry because I was sick, but anytime I was hungry, I just heat a little bit of that soup up and have it with a piece of toast or just have it by itself. And that's just a game changer when you're sick to just heat up a little pot of soup. So that's an obvious one, but I recommend that. My next tip and probably the biggest tip I can give you is it's okay if things don't get done while you're sick. You just have to lower your standards. Let the dishes pile up. Let the laundry pile up. I mean, you might need, you know, one fork, one spoon, one plate and one set of clothes for each of you to wear and everything else can just pile up. Honestly, it's okay. You can do it when you're better, but while you're sick, just rest. You know, if you've got people to reply to, don't bother, bills to pay, unless they're absolute deadline, don't do them. Like just, just cut yourself some slack really, really drop your standards. Now, as a single mom with a small baby, you probably already had to drop your standards because it's very hard to get everything done that you normally would. But when you're sick, that just goes like to DEFCON 10. The dropping of standards. Like you just have to drop everything that's not essential because you physically have no energy. Like if I had been a single person without a baby and I'd got that exact same case of COVID, I would have stayed in bed all day. I would have slept all day. I would have slept all night. I might have watched a bit of Netflix in bed and I basically would have just passed out. When you have to look after a small baby, particularly if they're under one years old, they're really, really young, you know, you're breastfeeding, you, you can't just lie in bed all day. So you're really exhausted. You have to somehow 
pick up the baby, breastfeed the baby, change their nappy, make a bottle if you're feeding bottles or make food for them if you're feeding solids. Like That stuff is the essential. You have to just look yeah. after your baby and that's it. Everything else just falls away. So I would just say, drop your standards, let everything go. It can get done next week. It can get the, get done in two weeks. You know, If you have to get some friends over to help you or pay a cleaner to help you, but just let it go or do it yourself in a couple of weeks. Honestly, your only job is to look after you and look after the baby. Sleep whenever you can. Drink water. Just drink lots and lots and lots of water. Eat whatever you can whenever you can. If you've made a pot of soup, make your soup. If not, you might be eating toasted peanut butter or just an apple. That's okay. And feed your baby. That's it. Sleep, drink water, feed you, feed your baby. That's your job. Until you're better. Everything else, do later. She loves looking at this mirror. I'm going to give her this mirror to look at. Hey, look at the mirror. Is there a baby in that mirror? Is it you or is it another baby? <laughs> My next tip is have lots of water. When you get your friend to bring you food, if you're somewhere where you don't have good tap water, get your friend to bring you lots and lots of bottles of water. If you're somewhere where you have good water, maybe right now go and fill up a whole lot of spare water bottles and stick them in the bottom of your cupboard in case you get sick in the next year. I just think it's really important to have a stash of water and good quality water. Now, obviously, if you can just drink tap water in your house and you don't need to filter it or anything, fine. But in my case, I have to filter it because the water here isn't good. So I was really lucky that I had a stash of filtered water that I had prepared in advance in case we had bushfire or something, a, a storm and the power went out, we can't get water. So if you're in a situation where it's not easy for you to drink the water out of the tap, always have some water as a backup because when you're sick, the number one thing you have to do is just drink water, water, water. And when you're sick alone by yourself with a baby, you just have to have it already there. It all has to be all there on tap, organized for you. On a similar note, I think it's important to always have some backup meals in the freezer, especially when you're a single mom, or when you're any mom, any kind of mom, but especially when you're a single mom, just because, you know, in situations like when there's COVID going around, you might be isolated, not be able to get food. If you just have some backup stuff, I, I always have some backup meals in the freezer and they really came in handy when I was sick, even though I made my big pot of soup. Towards the end, when I started to run out of the soup, I had some food in the freezer. So highly recommend that generally anyway, as a single mom, but specifically if it's flu season or there's COVID going around or just generally it's good to have some backup food in your freezer. Okay, my next point is part of the dropping your standards thing. Netflix is your friend when you're sick with a baby. What I mean is, you know, if you've had all these strict rules about don't let your baby see any screen time and keep your baby away from the screen, you know, when you're sick, that has to go out the window. She has not seen any screens since she was born other than, you know, looking at family over FaceTime. She's not watched any television or anything. I'm, I really don't think that's healthy for small babies. That's just my opinion. Everyone's allowed their own opinion, but that's the policy I've been having. But when I was sick, I just, there were sometimes I was so exhausted. I obviously couldn't lie in bed and watch Netflix or watch movies because I had to look after her. So what I would do is I put her in the playpen next to me and then I would just sit next to the playpen and watch it on my laptop or sit on the couch and watch it on the TV and have her in the playpen near me where I could watch her. And I just like lay like this like for two weeks. Whoa. Or my baby played on the floor. Whoa. And she was looking up and seeing the screen. But what I did was I had it on headphones so she couldn't hear the sound. I didn't watch anything violent or anything that I thought would distress her if she looked up. It was all very PG, homely kind of stuff. You know, teen dramas or whatever, simple, nice stuff that I thought if she looked up and saw the images, she'd be okay, wouldn't traumatize her. But I gave myself permission to just watch TV for hours on end, watch Netflix for hours on end because I was sick and you got to do what you got to do because otherwise I was going to fall asleep. So I was either fall asleep, my baby plays on the floor unsupervised or lie on the couch like this. Listen to an audio book. I did a lot of that too. Listen to my audio book while I watched her play or watching Netflix, half watching Netflix while I watched her play. <coughs> now, not all of you will have babies that you can just put on the floor and they'll happily entertain themselves like my baby will. I, I really am aware of that. I've got a lot of friends from meeting through mother's groups and stuff with babies that they need to be held all the time or that they just get bored after 10 minutes. They're not the sort of babies that you can just put down. So in that case, obviously you'll have to develop a different strategy. But if you have a baby, is happy to play by themselves, even if it's only for 20 minutes or 30 minutes at a time, make the most of that while they're sick. <laughs> when they're better, of course you go back to playing with them and giving them your time and your energy and helping educate them and entertaining them and playing with them and all the things you normally do because you're a great mother. But when you're sick, you just have to drop your standards. You just... Yeah. <laughs> so another point about dropping your standards, you may be someone who's like, I don't take medication. 
I just don't take medication. I let my body heal naturally. I trust my body to heal naturally. And that's true. I'm like that normally. If I got the flu, I wouldn't take cold and flu medicine. I wouldn't take chest syrup or cough syrup. I like to let my body have a fever so it can fight off the infection. I don't like trying to take things that mask the fever. But when I was sick this time, because I had a small baby to look after, I had to drop that standard. It was like, no, I, I can't look after my baby if my head's foggy and I'm about to fall over and I'm burning up with fever. So I took cold and flu tablets. I, I drank cough syrup. I did what I had to do to get through the day to look after this little baby. And then at night, I didn't take anything so that my body could really burn up with fever and you know burn off the illness and sweat it out. And I was sweating like a crazy person. Like I was changing clothes about four times a night, like as if someone had taken my clothes, put them in a swimming pool. And then I'd wake up like totally soaked. So obviously my body was doing a lot to try and burn off this COVID stuff. But during the day, I did take stuff that masked the fever symptom, the masked the cold and flu symptom, because I had to look after her. I had to be able to think clearly. So that was really important. So I'm glad I did that. That was another example of dropping my standards. And the last thing I will say is, Cut yourself some slack in terms of your own recovery. If you have COVID or if you have the flu or if you have a stomach bug or gastro or whatever it is, if you're sick while you have a small baby, you are not going to recover as quickly as you normally would. You're just not because you're not getting any sleep. You can't just lay in bed all day and sleep and you're not sleeping through the night. So if I had got COVID and I was by myself, I could have just slept all day, slept through the night. I probably would have recovered in a few days. I didn't have such a bad case of it. But because I had to look after her all day and then I was feeding her milk every single hour, all day and all night, I never got any sleep. So it took me two weeks to recover from something that I think I probably would have recovered in three or four days. because I didn't have a terribly bad case of it. It was bad, but it wasn't like life-threatening or anything. But I couldn't get on top of it because I couldn't sleep. So I had to just accept that. I had to accept that it was going to take me longer to recover. I had to give myself permission to just take a few weeks off and, and recover slowly as I needed to recover. And even after you recover from the flu or the gastro or the COVID or whatever it is, you might still not be yourself for a few weeks. So cut yourself some slack, drop your standards. It's okay. It's okay. It's just what you have to do. You're just not going to have your normal recovery skills that you normally would have in your life before you had the baby. You just won't because you're not getting sleep. So that's only a few points that, that, that helped me through this first time being sick with a small baby. I'm sure there's so many of you watching who've been sick many, many, many times with your babies. I know once kids start going to childcare, they come home all the time with colds and flus and the mums catch them. I always feel for the single mothers, how do they cope getting sick, sick, sick all the time? I'm, I'm quite nervous about that myself when she's at the age to send her to daycare. Like, I don't want to go through what I just went through with COVID all the time where I'm sick at home, exhausted and with a fever and trying to look after a baby by myself. That does not sound fun. I know a lot of you watching have probably been in that situation many, many times. So please leave suggestions in the comments below to help the other single mamas out there. Look how cute you are. You see how cute you are now that you're well and healthy again? And always remember, it's okay to live in your pyjamas for a couple of weeks. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Can you say goodbye to the people in the camera?